the purpose of today's lecture is to understand capital adequacy management. Now, if you remember, capital is part of bank's liabilities. And what is capital once again? Is the shareholders portion of the bank. That means the money that the bank has raised by selling stocks in the bank. Now, why it is important to have adequate capital? Now, capital, if you remember, is a cushion. It's a leftover factor. That means the factor that balances the assets and the liability sides. Again, total assets equal to liabilities plus capital. Now, what's the importance of capital? Capital helps to prevent bank failures. And we'll be talking about that in a bit to explain it further using a bank's balance sheet. Now, first let's try to understand what is a bank failure. It's a situation in which bank cannot satisfy its obligations to pay its depositors and other creditors and go so goes out of business. So it essentially means that if you show up in a bank and a bank says that they don't have money to pay you, that means bank is failing bank will should not ever be able to tell you that if they can't pay back your deposits and that's the idea behind bank failure but here's the problem problem is that amount of capital effect returns to the owners that is equity holders on the bank that means larger the bank capital lower will be the returns for the equity holders it will become clearer as we discuss the bank capital using a bank's balance sheet. So let's start with a scenario where we have a high bank capital and a low bank capital. So if you look at the liability side, this bank has a deposits of $90 million and the bank capital of $10 million. So a high bank capital has a bank capital of $10 million. On the other hand, that the assets, they have $10 million in reserves and the loans of $90 million. Let's go to the low bank capital. So here on the liability side, the BIS bank has a deposit of $96 million against $90 million for the high bank capital, but they have a lower bank capital of $4 million. On the other hand, on the assets, this bank has a reserves of $10 million and the loans of $90 million. So for the both high bank capital and the low bank capital, assets are exactly the same. However, their liabilities are very different. The low bank capital has very low bank capital of $4 million against $10 million for high bank capital. Now let's imagine a situation. Suppose that $5 million of housing loans have become worthless when these bad loans are written off, valued at zero, the total value of assets declines by $5 million. That means if there's a failure, let's say the 2008 financial crisis, when a lot of people failed to pay back their mortgages, and those were counted as bad loans. If loans goes by $10, $5 million, that means the value of their assets decreases by $5 million. So as a consequence, bank capital, which equals total assets minus liabilities, also declined by $5 million. The balance sheet of two banks now look like this. You can see here for high bank capital, the loan has gone down from $90 million to $85 million. Same for the low bank capital. The loans has come down from 90 to 85 which essentially means that now the assets for each bank is now 95 million and 95 million. So something has to go down on the liability side as well. Now, mind you, bank can't say that depositors money is going down because they, these are the obligations they have. So deposits remain same. So only thing that can adjust is the bank capital. So this high bank capital, now the bank capital has decreased from $10 million to $5 million. On the other hand, for the low bank capital, it started with the $4 million. Now essentially their bank capital is negative $1 million. Now what does this negative $1 million means? It means that the bank is insolvent. The bank cannot 
pay their depositors. They really simply their balance sheet is cannot balance because negative equity has absolutely no meaning in the bank's balance sheet. For the high bank capital, they have been able to weather this loan defaults by reducing their bank capital. That means shareholders are taking the hit, the value of the investment decreases. But for the low bank capital, they can't do it because they are already holding a very low bank capital of $4 million as a result of $5 million loss or bad loans. Their bank capital is now negative. That means low bank capital failed and this this bank has failed so let's now try to understand this little better using some of the equations and some definitions so remember we talked about how shareholders would like to have lower bank capital but lower bank capital also increases the risk of insolvency now question is why shareholders like to have low bank capital Let's try to understand that fact. First, let's start with the definition of returns on assets. Is the net profit of the taxes per dollar of assets. Now, how do we measure it? This is nothing but net profit of the taxes over assets. So ROA is our returns on assets, and this is a basically profit per unit of assets. We will also define returns on equity. This is a net profit of the taxes per dollar of equity capital. This is the again the bank capital portion. This is done as returns on equity. This is net profit of the taxes over equity capital or bank capital. So just to make sure we are using the same terminology. So equity capital and bank capital and capital are all exactly the same things. Then we are going to define equity multiplier this is the amount of assets per dollar of equity capital that means it's the assets over equity capital or bank capital finally we'll talk about the relationship between return on assets and roe mind you as a shareholder all you care about returns on equities why you care about returns on equities because it all you care about how the profits of the banks or returns are distributed among the shareholders. That's why you just care about returns on equities. You really don't care about returns on assets because return on assets also include returns to the depositors. But as a shareholder in the bank, you only care about returns on equities. And here's the relationship in returns on equities and return on assets and equity multiplier. So return on equity is equal to return on assets times equity multiplier. So let's try to understand this a little better. So if equity multiplier increases, and by definition, equity multiplier is assets over equity capital. If equity capital is low and assets are high, that means equity multiplier increases. If equity multiplier increases for the same return on assets, ROE increases, returns on equities increases. And that's why banks or, or shareholders in the bank likes to have higher equity multiplier. Now it can be achieved by two ways. One by increasing your assets or you're decreasing your bank capital or equity capital. How can you decrease your bank capital or equity capital? Remember, share buybacks. That's what banks often do. And that's what exactly happened during the 2017 tax cut that President Trump initiated. So what happened, most of these banks and financial institutions, even corporation, what they engaged in is share buybacks. The money they saved, they didn't invest. They bought back the shares. So this equity capital decreases, which means that equity multiplier increases. Increased equity multiplier means increased returns on equities. That's what exactly what shareholders love because all they care about is their returns on their investment, which increases if equity multiplier increases. Now here's the problem. Problem is there's a trade off between safety and returns to equity holders. 
Bank capital benefits the owners of the bank in that it makes the investment safer by reducing the likelihood of bankruptcy. That means bank failures. But bank capital is costly because higher it is, lower will be the returns on the equities for a given returns on assets, which again shareholder doesn't like. That's why during the good times, most of these banks engage in heavy borrowing which essentially means they're increasing their liabilities so they can buy more assets with very low bank capital. But at the same time, it makes that whole thing extremely risky because as we saw, if for some reason during bad times, if their investments go bad, especially low, people start defaulting on their loans, that means their assets are going to vanish and there's no cushion there or they may not have enough bank capital. That's why Fed requires as part of regulations that banks should have a minimum amount of bank capital, which we will be discussing later.